And so in the previous video about hydrogen atom and the hydrogen spectrum, you have learned that the energy levels for electrons are discrete. Okay, so discrete here meaning that the electrons can only exist in certain energy levels drawn by these horizontal green color lines. Okay, but this is only for gas because in gas the atoms are kind of far apart, so they're kind of like chilling alone, so their energy levels are discrete. However, let's imagine now if I can bring a few of these atoms and put them close to each other. Now, these atoms, right, they will have electrons inside the energy level. If the atom is on their own, then the electron can only exist in this discrete energy level. But electrons have electric field. And if you put them close to another uh, atom, the electrons in the first sodium atom will influence the electrons in the second sodium atom. And this influence will cause suddenly the electron level to shift slightly. Not a lot, but slightly. Okay, but what will happen when we put many, many of these sodium atoms together? So for example, instead of going for a gas state, we go for a liquid or even a solid state. And as all things go, when it comes to atoms, we have billions and billions. Think about the Avogadro constant. Many, many atoms. And what happens when we put these many, many atoms together? The energy levels, this discrete energy level, will begin to spread out. So every time we add another atom, we will add another level. We just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding and adding. And if you have billions and billions of lines, it will spread out into an energy band. And each energy band will have many, many electrons. In fact, you will have two N word of electrons. So this is because the 1s orbital, if you do chemistry, has two electrons. Think about orbital as a region of space or a band of energy level where the electron can exist. Now, if each sodium atom brings two electrons to the table, n sodium atom will bring two n electrons to the table. So there are so many, 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 many electrons inside the energy band. Okay? So this is how we can go from the discrete level model that is shown inside the gas discharge tube in the previous subtopic to an energy band. So this one exists for gas, gas of low pressure. So the particles are far apart and they don't influence each other. And this energy band exists in solid and liquid where the particles are close together and their electric field will influence each other. So welcome to band theory. So this video is going to be slightly different than the videos that you're used to in different parts of this topic because uh, I will break down band theory, apply it in different materials, and interlace them with examples. Okay, so depending on the length of the video, we may chop it up so that it's a bit more manageable. But what is band theory? Just now I've explained it to you. We're now going to write down the actual explanation. Okay, so when atoms are close together, specifically in non-gaseous form, gaseous, Okay, so when they're close together, we highlight this. The electrons in the atom experiences forces due to the changes in the neighboring atoms, right? So the neighboring atoms will influence each other, okay? This causes the energy of the electron to change slightly. Consequently, or because of this, the discrete energy level in an isolated atom will spread out. Okay, so it will spread out because you have many, many lines. So it's spread out to become an energy band in a solid. Okay, so how will this be asked in past year? Or what will CIE want from you when you are trying to explain what is band theory? We are now going to look at a past year question. All right, so this is a question from summer 16, paper 4.1. Normally, in a band theory question, they will show you a drawing that looks like this. And uh, as a physics teacher, I'm a little bit miffed because they didn't label the axis. But what essentially this uh, drawing means is that the vertical axis is energy. Okay, and then there are certain bands. 
all right? But before I discuss about what is a valence band, what is a forbidden band, what is a conduction band, part A, in isolated atom, electron levels have uh, discrete values, okay? So just why in a solid, there are energy bands. So why are there energy bands in a solid rather than discrete energy levels? Three marks. So it's basically just uh, repeating what I've said just now. So we're going to practice again because when it comes to writing scientific essay, you should remember to include the main points and also the keywords. So we'll start from the beginning. We will say that in a solid, the electron in, always talk about the neighbor that is close by. The atom was chilling, minding its own business until you put it in a solid, suddenly so many atoms near me. Ooh, my electrons will change energy level. So energy in the neighboring atoms are close together. Okay, so the electrons in the neighboring atoms are close together. Okay, and influence each other. The electron was fine in its own discrete level until you put it together with other atoms which have other electrons. Okay, so then you can talk about how this changes the electron's energy level. Although these are also orbits, we don't talk about it as orbits because this is not chemistry. So we talk about it as energy levels. Okay, so you can then say since there are many atoms in the lattice structure, of the solid, a spread in the energy level into a band happens. So something like this. Three marks. One mark is when you say the electron in the neighboring atoms are close together and or they influence each other. Second mark, this causes a change or a slight change in the electron's energy level. Third mark, because there are many atoms, so we will have a spread in energy level into a band. This will be the final mark. Okay. By the way, uh, I kind of want to explain a bit what is lattice structure in case you don't know because chemistry was not your chosen subject. Lattice structure here is the arrangement of atoms in a solid, how they are arranged. Are they arranged in a cube structure? Are they arranged in a hexagonal structure? Is it tri? Is it a tri pyramid? Tri. Okay, brain hang. Not teaching chemistry. So this lattice structure simply means the arrangement of atoms in a solid. Okay, so are they arranged in a cube form? Are they arranged in a pyramid form? I are basically, if you're building something in Minecraft, what kind of shape are you building? Okay, so, but in the left structure, there are many, many atoms. So they are close by and they will influence each other. How they influence each other depends on their bond length, their arrangement in a solid, and all of this is physical chemistry. So just understand that these are also important. And uh, this is where we stop in our understanding for physics. So when we talk about band theory, these are the three points. Electrons are close to each other. They will influence each other. Because of this, it will slightly change the electron's energy level. Because there are many atoms in a solid lattice structure, the energy level will spread into a band. All right. So now we're going to apply the band theory, since we already understand what it means, into three different materials. The conductor, the semiconductor, and the insulator. But before we move on, we need to understand how the energy level bands, energy bands inside the conductor, semiconductor and insulator look like. Okay, and how we can describe them. So let's go back to our notes.